This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. Are there any questions? Joan Bryden, Canadian Press. Um, I just want to ask you about your own uh, leadership intentions. What have you, you know, been thinking over the course of the summer? Have you come to any conclusions yet? Or, and if not now, when? I'm at stage three. Um, <laughs> stage one is, uh, is there support out there for somebody like me? Uh, stage two is, do I have something to offer? And stage three is, uh, is there a team that would be willing to support me? And that's where I'm at at this point. And the team is very important because if you do enter the race, uh, I don't need to tell you that it involves a lot of traveling, it involves raising money, it involves marketing yourself, and uh, you need some, uh, you need some uh, experienced people to do that. So I'm at that stage now. I'm in the middle of it. When do you think you might? Uh, sometime this fall. And I'll come out and say uh, yes or no at that point. I, I'll be very up for out it. Out there this summer, like, what are they saying? It, it, you know, it, since, uh, since July, we haven't heard a whole lot about uh, what's going on. You've obviously been active. I have been active, uh, not the whole time, but I have been active, uh, and I have been trying to gauge that mood. Uh, I would say that there's a mood of, of uh, cautious optimism that we're doing the right things. Uh, as of the 3rd of May 2011, uh, we had to pick up a lot of pieces, including ourselves, off the floor. And the first thing we needed to do uh, was to choose an interim leader. We made the right choice in choosing Bob Ray, and, and Bob Ray continues to be a great leader for us. So we did the first thing right. Secondly, uh, we had to um, get together, and we had a convention in January. And we had to show that we were ready for change. And I think the election of the national executive, the fact that we adopted some interesting resolutions, the fact that there were a 1,000 young people there, all were uh, encouraging um, indications that we were changing. We were ready to listen. We were ready to change the guard. We, wa we wanted to, uh, and, and the large number of people attending showed that th there's, a, there's life in the party. Now the question that, that naturally comes after that, everybody would like everything to be solved in the first year and everything to be perfect, but the questions that remain to be answered, quite apart from choosing a, uh, a, a leader, uh, which we'll do next April, is the fact that people want to hear more from us on policy. They want to answer the question, okay, so what, what do the Liberals stand for and how will that differentiate itself sufficiently from the other, the NDP and the Conservatives, to uh, provide us with a, a separate alternative should we decide in, in 2015 to vote for that. And that's a fair thing. And that's what we need to do now. Uh, I think the leadership race, when it gets underway, will bring out some of that. It will bring out policies because obviously people are going to say, well, well, how are you different from the other person? What, what are your views on this and that? And that, at that point, will be perfectly fair game for, for uh, people to ask the questions, well, if you're going to be the leader, what is it that you're going to do that's going to attract me? So I think the policy part, which is still to come out, is going to come out in the next uh, eight months. And I think that will be the third important thing that we uh, will, uh, will need to do as part of our rebuilding towards the next election. I think so far, I think we've done things pretty well. Uh, so I'm encouraged by that. I think there is unity. I think there's discipline. Uh, we've got to continue with that. Uh, as far as the entry fee is concerned, uh, I would say, and this is, this is sort of a conventional wisdom, I think one wants to set that at a level that will, uh, you know, um, uh, discourage non-serious candidacies. So, well, I think that, you know, uh, uh, I think that once you start getting above something like $25,000, I think that uh, that's a lot of money for, for people to raise. And so I think that if you're going to raise at least that much, and of course you do need more, uh, then uh, you need to, um, 
it, it's it's a it's a serious uh, it's a serious uh, undertaking to raise that amount of money. That is only my personal opinion. And whether or not you intend, to, you know, how much you would spend, um, what do you think is a reasonable limit to impose on people? I mean, considering that in your last contest you ended up with, you know, most of the candidates with a, t a lot of debt. I will not go of, into some, debt. Some of whom have not paid it off. I will not go into debt. I'll tell you that right now. I will work uh, with what I can raise, and that's it. On the, uh, the uh, candidate Europe free trade talks, that's expected to be an issue as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is something where the government has, and I sit opposite uh, Ed Fast and Gerald Keddy, and they've gotten up and taken their speaking lines and said that we're going to create uh, X numbers of uh, tens of thousands of new jobs, and and their projections that they'll, this will inject billions of dollars into the economy, and uh, so they've 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 given us all the advance. Uh, good news on this. Uh, obviously, we're in the 11th hour, especially if Harper wants to uh, get this resolved by the end of the year, as he gave himself that target to do. Uh, obviously, uh, all the low-hanging fruit have been picked, and the difficult issues are, are on the table at this point. Um, I am in favor of free trade. The Liberal Party is in favor of free trade. Uh, we believe that's good in this world today. Uh, but the talks have been so secretive that we have no idea, really, what the we have some idea we can surmise, but we don't really know what the difficult sticking points are. And I'm sure at this point there are difficult sticking points. And given the fact that Europe has its own challenges at the moment, uh, that makes the, the climate for, for uh, coming up with a, a CETA agreement uh, probably even more challenging. Uh, so I would encourage the government to let the rest of Canada in on what it is that uh, they are now in deep negotiations on, in other words, the sticking points. What was the advantage of that? If, if these are negotiations, would that not be undermining your own negotiating position? Uh, why should Canadians not know what, uh, what uh, a uh, trade deal that can pot potentially affect us, either positively or negatively, uh, what the details are? It seems to me that uh, that uh, there's no reason for secrecy on this. One of the issues that has been uh, reportedly, one of the sticking points that uh, reportedly is uh, intellectual property, uh, specifically when it relates to uh, to uh, drug drug patents. Pharmaceutical like industry. A um, uh, number of provinces have raised concerns about that. Do you have any, any views? Just Once again, let's see what the specific issues are. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, aware of, of the issue of intellectual property. Uh, I'm very aware of it in pharmaceuticals and generic uh, drug manufacturers. What are the implications at the moment? What is the government's position entering into these negotiations with Europe? And how will it affect our generic industry and the pharmaceutical the, the brand manufacturers uh, that are here in Canada. Um, and what implications will it have for American pharmaceutical companies that also do business here in Canada? Uh, why can't we see what, uh, what is on the table? We suspect we know what's on the table. Why can't we know what are the sticking points? I think uh, you'll get a much better and, and definite opinion from me if, uh, if, if I know what, what the facts are. I think we've gone around the questions, really? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got another trade issue. Uh, mm -hmm. Earlier today, uh, uh, at Fast Office released the Canada-China comparative, uh, comparative uh, it was a study, economic study, on whether they should start moving ahead on economic integration, free trade and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, this has been seen as possibly the next step towards eventual free trade talks. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to see it, probably not, but uh, you know, if you have any views on the potential of Canada, deeper in economic integration between Canada and China. I think that free trade with China is a, is a good thing, and we should be looking towards that. 
And once again, uh, I hope that it will end up being on a level playing field. That is extremely important uh, because we're dealing with what will be very shortly the largest uh, economy in the world. Uh, there's no question about that. And an extremely important trading partner for us who is very, interesting in what, uh, very interested in what we have to offer. But we also want to make sure that it is a level playing field. And I've spoken about this uh, at, uh, on a number of occasions related to foreign investment and other things. So yes, by all means, let's go ahead and, and engage in, fr in free trade with China. Uh, that is extremely important for the future of our economy. But let's, let's play our cards properly too. And we'll see uh, if that goes forward. And I hope the government will not sort of indulge in its usual highly secretive approach to everything.